What's this? Jags franchise? Not quite. Of course, if you guys are new here on the channel, you may not know, but I have a Jaguar series where I go in and play every single game. We're in season three, and it's been a lot of fun. A guy you won't be seeing is Dennis Peoples, though. If you see that franchise, you know what I'm talking about. I would bet that there are a lot of you that don't, though. Dennis Peoples is the best player I've ever drafted in any Madden ever in one of my franchise series, and he is electric. If you don't watch the series, I would recommend at least checking it out and hitting that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I think about 50% of you guys that watch these videos are not actually subscribed. It's very easy. Just go down, hit that subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. You can always unsubscribe later, but if you're watching these rebuild videos anyway and these other type of videos I post on the channel, I mean, you might as well be subscribed so you see them when they come out. And also, check out the description, Teespring, it's holiday season. Got the Vanilla Vic on today. Uh, I absolutely love this hoodie. And um, you guys could pick it up if you'd want as well. Teespring.com, link is in the description. I'll leave it in the top line. I'll leave it in the comments. Uh, you guys have been getting a lot of this lately, so that is so awesome. I'm loving that you're enjoying it. Has some other designs on there as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the Jaguars rebuild. We'll talk more about this team here in a minute. Although I would assume a lot of you guys are already familiar with it because of Jags franchise on the channel. I will also note that during this franchise, this is not the hyper realistic version that I will do somewhere down the line with, you know, actual 2021 NFL draft prospects. And I did upload that draft class. I've updated it a ton. It is on PlayStation. So it will be on PS4, PS5 on those file shares. So definitely make sure to check it out. So many different players have been upgraded, dev traits, ratings, but that's not going to be showcased in this video. That'll be later on down the line. So you do want to subscribe so you don't miss that. But let's talk about the team. Cam Robinson at left tackle, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, AJ Kahn, Jamar Taylor. Why do I call him Jamar Taylor every time? It is Jawan Taylor. Played tackle at Florida. I don't know why I call him Jamar. Like, quick instinct. It was a corner in the NFL. This is Jawan Taylor. Tyler Eifert at tight end, James O'Shaughnessy, Josh Oliver. The offensive line isn't terrible per se, but we have a lot of developing to do. AJ Khan probably won't be as he is 28 years old. Going to hit that regression point pretty soon. Cam Robinson is an impending free agent. And even though he's 24, I don't know that I want to bring him back just yet. So we'll make those decisions. Gardner Minshew, I'm going to tell you, probably not the future of this team in Madden at least. We've seen how that's played out in Jags franchise. And he, you know, he's gotten up to a pretty decent development trade overall. But here in this video, he's in, you know, he's a 71 overall. He's got 85 throw power. Decent accuracy, to be fair. Star development. Like, there is something to work with here. Only 24 years old. But I'm not sure it's it for me. James Robinson has been unreal. The rookie out of Illinois State has been borderline dominant. He's up there near the top of the league in rushing yards. He breaks a handful of tackles. James Robinson is a very solid player so far, so you love to see an undrafted rookie come out, start in their first year, and do as well as he has. It's been awesome to see. Behind him, Chris Thompson, um, Agumba Wale, Raquel Armstead, even uh, Jake Lutton in there. At receiver, do have some things to work with. DJ Chark, love him. LaVisca Chenault, going to be playing quite a bit. Got D.D. Westbrook in behind him. Keelan Cole, Chris Conley, the rookie out of Texas, Colin Johnson. Hook him horns, big Texas fan, as many of you will know. Jared Wilson and, what is this, Josh Jones, former Packer. Yeah. Not a great safety tandem. And I think even Andrew Wingard has probably been their best safety this year, which has been odd to say. At linebacker, we got Miles Jack, Joe Schobert, Kamale Correa. Behind him, not a ton. Quincy Williams, Leon Jacobs, Shaq Quarterman. And even Correa is interesting to me because I don't think of him as someone that plays off the ball really at all. Yet, it seems like he's developing into being that hybrid guy. I remember him with the Ravens. On the defensive line, Aaron Lynch, Antoine Woods, Devon Hamilton, who's looked pretty good. Josh Allen. Now, I do want to move Caleb on Chase on into that starting role just because he was a first-round rookie. You want to get him some more playing time, maybe develop him. And then a first-round rookie on the other side, C.J. Henderson. He has been up and down, but has looked better than terrible, in my opinion. Like, um, when I say better than, like, bad. He's had more good than bad. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Sidney Jones on the other side. He's been something else in Jags franchise, but he's been awesome in real life. So it'll be nice to develop him. He was so good at Washington, and just with the Eagles, 
really never realized that. I think he tore his ACL coming out of Washington and just like, uh, you know, never really was able to find his dominance in college. DJ Hayden, Trey Herndon, Rashawn Melvin. We have some pieces to work with. Joe Schobert is probably a contract I'm going to look to get rid of at some point. He's only 26 right now, but he's about two years out from that age of regression. He's only 78 overall. And I think more than that, if you check out his contract, he's getting paid a lot. Five years, 32.3 just in terms of salary. So that contract's going to get well over $10 million in terms of cap hit uh, down the line. So we got to look out for that. But I will be simulating to the midseason mark here in a minute. I'm not sure there are many players I really want to trade. I mean, I'll take a look. If Minshew's not going to be the future, it would be wise to unload him at some point. But the time is not now for that. Let me just see if I want to trade anybody, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, big trade here to start out. DJ Hayden, Al Woods, and Cam Robinson. I decided to trade Cam Robinson just because I don't think I'm going to re-sign him. So there's no point in just letting him escape to free agency. I'm getting a first-round pick and a second-round pick next year from the Giants. That should be a great trade for us. Like, I think the biggest piece we're giving up is Cam Robinson. But again, didn't really have plans to re-sign him. So I would rather just tank a little bit this year. I mean, the Jags are, what, 1-10 in, in real life anyway. This really isn't a great team. But we are going to try and develop what we have. There's a lot of young talent on this team. You can't really find, like, many super old players. Taven Bryan's been kind of a bust. We're going to play him over Avery Jones, though, who is 28 years old. I wanted to get rid of some of these older players, but a lot of them just won't, just won't really have value. Like Rashawn Melvin, what's the point? I think that's going to be it for trades. I'm just going to simulate to the midseason mark and think about re-signing some of these other these uh, other players. Maybe I'm going to stop at like week six or seven, just before the trade deadline, so I don't lose out on potential opportunities to unload players. One and five here in week eight, not too good. But Sidney Jones is an impending free agent, as is Keelan Cole, Dede Westbrook. Now, in real life, or not in real life, excuse me, in Jags franchise, which is real life to me at this point, we did re-sign D.D. Westbrook, gave him a big contract extension, and I might end up doing the same thing here. The only one that's actually a tough decision, I would say, is Keelan Cole. And even D.D. Westbrook's a little hard as well, because he is going to stop developing. He might be a sign and trade candidate. Sidney Jones, I absolutely want back for the future. Only normal development, sure. He's not expensive. He's an 81 overall. He's only 24 years old. I have to bring him back, and I'd be happy to do so. 33 million over five. That's a good deal for me. And then D.D. Westbrook, I would be comfortable, I mean, with a four-year deal, more than just a three-year deal. This really isn't that expensive either. He'll get into the 80s. He's a good, solid third option at receiver. And then Keelan Cole... I mean, I don't really think I can bring him back. We have so much cap room, but I mean, I would guess I would do a two-year deal with the intent and the thought process of trading him down the line. I think so. I'd, well, I'd like Trey Herndon back as well. He is cheap, super cheap, and he also is pretty good, pretty young. He'll be a good maybe fourth, even third best cornerback on the roster, so that really isn't too bad. The rest, I don't really care about. And I think I really should look to trade Keelan Cole right now. Trading Keelan Cole and Kamale Correa, as well as a fourth round pick, to the Jets for one of their first round picks. I think that's the one that they actually have, so that should be a very, very good one. Unless the Seahawks are doing very, very poorly, which I doubt. But I think those were important players to trade. We could trade Chris Conley. I'm not going to go overboard. I think we've already done quite enough. We have our picks. Didn't really want to trade for any players. We're just going to see how it goes. I did consider trading Gardner Minshew. I know the guys down in Duval County, Jacksonville Jaguars fans, a lot of them love Gardner Minshew. And he is fun. He does have some exciting moments. He has some moments where he flashes. Just in Madden, I'm not sure he's the guy for the future. I think I will be trading him. I'm just going to wait a little bit to do so. Maybe a year or two. As we finish 2-14, and 14, one of the worst teams in the league, 32nd best offense. Wow. Defense, 23rd. Not good. Minshew was terrible. Rushing. James Robinson was pretty good. You'll take that yards per carry all day. Six touchdowns. Could be higher, but it's all right. Receiving, D.D. Westbrook had the most yards. Most touchdowns went to D.J. Chark. And most catches went to LaVisca Chenault, who played in the slot. 
pretty you know pedestrian numbers if i do say so myself and then on defense 21 tackles for loss for josh allen but only four sacks six and a half from caleb on chase on led the way he also had 11 tackles for loss a lot of tackles for loss on this team like a ton i wonder if something changed in like an update something had to have because we're seeing way more tackles for loss than we've ever previously seen in my opinion i think interceptions two for jack two for jared wilson i thought about trading him as well there just was almost no interest in the league at all yearly awards we have mvp justin herbert as a rookie wins mvp with the chargers oh my afc offense player of the year justin herbert of course no jaguars defensive player of the year i saw cap at the bottom goes to miles garrett miles jack at number four no other jaguars offensive rookie of the year of course it's gonna be justin herbert he won mvp James Robinson at four, Chenault at 10, and then defensive rookie of the year is Kenneth Murray. CJ Henderson at seven, and Caleb Von Chase on at eight, Devon Hamilton at 10. Well, on the bright side, we should have some excellent picks. We have a lot of money in free agency. We should be able to really have a quick turnover with how good this team could be because it's bad now, really, really awful. But I think this turnaround is gonna be super quick. We have money, we have picks, all we have to do is capitalize. 64 mil in free agency. Trent Williams is here. We don't have a left tackle. My concern is he's a little bit too old at 33. So a contract doesn't really make the most sense. CJ Henderson has superstar development, by the way. Earl Thomas is in here, as is Marcus Williams. Jayon Brown could be a really good option at outside linebacker. He's a little bit too expensive for me, honestly. But with a three-year deal... We do have the money. I don't really care. Like, I think that's a fine contract. It's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it really isn't too bad. Didn't even talk about Josh Lambeau too much, but maybe a short contract with Trent Williams makes sense. We have the money. We're going to need to protect whatever quarterback we end up getting, whether that's this year or next. I will offer Trent Williams a contract. We need a left tackle. We could end up drafting one. But I'm not going to be super interested about most of these guys in free agency anyway. Marcus Williams, I think, does make sense for this team. But if you guys watch Jags franchise, you'll know that that's a move I made in Jags franchise. I got to mix it up a little bit. Can't do the exact same thing, but I am hoping that Dennis Peoples is in the draft. Jayon Brown, Trent Williams, both rejected. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Is there anyone in here I want? I'm not really looking to sign guys that are older than 26. Will I break that? You know, probably not. There's no one in here that I really want at all. Like, no one even looks okay. You know, Trevor Ward actually wouldn't be the worst. I just don't think we need him. NFL draft time in 2021. I haven't seen the class, but I see that we have the top two picks. And also a pick a little bit farther down the board at number six. If we don't capitalize with a major draft class here, I'm going to be upset. And the quarterback class doesn't seem to be anything crazy. Abraham looks all right, but he's a mid-second round guy. And the CPU decided, oh, we're just not going to scout any of the other quarterbacks, but every single receiver? Come on, what is going on? The running backs kind of look insane. And even though we don't really need a running back, they almost look too good to pass up. And I rarely draft a running back, so I'm considering it for sure at the top of the second round there's so many amazing corners here and it's like corner just isn't a super huge need for us right now i don't know this is a very odd draft class i'm gonna tell you i'm probably gonna end up trading down from number one maybe even number two and, and number five or six as well yeah like the first player i really want is at like number eight and i don't care if i don't get him it would make zero sense to take these picks. So I'm going to trade down and get so many picks for the future. Trading number one overall to the Jets. First rounder this year. Two first rounders next year. Of course, one of those is from Seattle. But it did not make sense for me to take the number one overall pick. It doesn't make sense for me to take the number two overall pick. Trading number two overall to the Dolphins. We're getting first rounder next year second rounder next year and a first rounder number 14 overall this year i'm just telling you it doesn't make sense to take those picks will i keep my pick at number six overall i might i'm not positive 
Jets at number one overall take a safety. 75 overall. Really not too bad of a player there. And then Brian Eakins is a 72. Not too good. And Falcons with a stud there. Andrew Davis. Like, I just don't really want some of these guys. I think Spencer Odom would be a good pick here at number six. I would play him at defensive tackle in our 4 3. He would look to be. It would look to be a very good defensive tackle. He's only 21 years old. Let's go with him. Playing him at defensive tackle. He's number five in the draft. Took him number six. I appreciate the jersey number. Nice. Nice merch in the description if you're interested in that. Only normal developments. So that sucks. But 76 speed, 76 finesse moves, 75 power moves, 79 block shed to go with 88 strength. He should be a very good defensive tackle. Someone that will start right away. As I will simulate to pick number 14. We pick again at 16. Can never have enough pass rushers, right? Raheem Burnett at LSU. I feel like I was going to say that very strangely. Looks pretty solid to me. Power rusher. Can't even see it in the top skills. But, so you know it's going to be pretty good with his archetype. Early first round guy. He is also a 76 overall. But number nine. The number nine overall player is a 76. That's pretty good. This might be a strong draft class in terms of overall depth. 82 power moves. 82 speed. I mean, he'll be a guy that could rotate in be a light defensive tackle maybe just as a sole rusher as you pick again at 16 i just don't love this class if i'm honest all right we really can just take three more players that i want 16 24 and at the top of the uh, second round it's just setting who do i want i think i am going to take a running back and i would never usually do this but javier morgan looks really really good 5'8", 210. You know who that build reminds me of is LaDainian Tomlinson. I want to say LaDainian Tomlinson was 5'10". Did go to TCU. Yeah, LaDainian Tomlinson, 5'10". 5'10", 215. But Javier Morgan built like a tank, but also at a TCU. We're going to take him. Javier Morgan, why not? 78 overall, the number two overall player in the class. Star better development. I am going to play him over James Robinson right away. Interesting. He's not even like an elusive back. He's both. He's just extremely well balanced, good speed, kind of can do it all. Can catch, can run over you. Only 68 power back, but he's got decent trucking, pretty good break tackle, decent stiff arm. I think we got a really good one there. At this pick, I'm taking a quarterback. Jason Abraham out of Washington. I think he's just too intriguing not to take a shot at him. So we go from a shorter Washington State quarterback to a very slightly taller Washington quarterback in Jason Abraham. He is a 70 overall. Does have star better development. We knew it was gonna be we knew it was gonna be a big reach here. Could see he was a mid-second round guy. But the fact that he has a decent development trait makes me happy with his selection. 89 throw power, already better than Minshew. So we do have a lot to work with right there already. Now the only thing I worry about is if his development is star is it really worth playing him over Minshew? And the reason I think it is, is his age. He's only 21. Minshew at this point would be 25. And that does matter quite a bit for development. I think we made a decent move there. Top of the second round, that running back lasted. He's going to be pretty good too. But the player that I want is Courtney Elam out of Texas. Of course, talked about it already. Big Texas fan. And he looks really, really good. He's a mid-first round guy. Supposed to go mid-second. I think he's going to be a solid player for us. He's going to play outside linebacker where he'll be a higher overall than whatever he is when we take him. He's probably going to be like a 74 overall middle linebacker in that range. So at outside linebacker, he's going to be like a 76, 73, only normal development. That's the thing that really frustrates me is only normal development. It is 22, 87 speed. Coverage really isn't quite there, but finesse moves is pretty high. Oh, this guy was built to be an outside linebacker third round here is there anything i really want you know mike pickett actually doesn't look terrible do have some guys on my draft board they're of course defensive tackles because they're going to be uh first round guys we can take down the board george mckenzie seems to be the better of the two but i'm gonna look just around see if i can find anything a little bit better all right so the only good players are defensive tackles do i just take all defensive tackles that would be stupid but also maybe not Devin Guy looks like the best, but the other two are higher rated. So I'm going to go George McKenzie. 74 overall, normal dev. Number 12 in the class, took him at 65. High strength, high black shade guy. Nice power moves, but it's really not all that good. Round four, Devin Guy. Seems to be very good. 
He actually does have a good development trait. Number 31 in the draft, took him 97. Star, better development, though. High strength, high power moves, decent speed. Block sheds a little low. But Devin Guy could be the guy for us. That's going to do it for the draft. So we really didn't have that crazy of a draft, in my opinion. Like, yeah, we got three guys at 76 overall or higher. It was a pretty good draft class overall. But Spencer Odom... Normal development. I know this is Madden 21. This isn't just me, but Raheem Burnett, normal dev. Javier Morgan did have star better. Jason Abraham did have star better, but he's only a 70 overall. Courtney Elam, normal dev. George McKenzie, normal dev. Devin Guy had better than normal, but you get the point. It's just frustrating to draft only normal development players for the most part. And I know it seems like it wasn't there because we did get three, but they were bad players. I don't know. Um, whatever the top player in the class was the other running back and the giants took him 79 overall but normal dev so we made the right decision thank god if we took this guy and waited on him yeah we would get the number one overall player in the class but only normal development i don't want it i'm happy with getting the number two and getting a good development trait when it's one overall damian honeycutt has star better spencer odom fourth best player in the class did not donovan wade normal Damar Farr, cool name, normal. Dwayne Hurst has hidden. That's a shock. Oh, he seems actually really good. 80 speed, 87 power moves. Wow. Block shed's real low. He got taken in the third round? Man, I wish the CPU would have scouted left ends. Because there's no way I would have missed him. Oh, man, he looks sick. First overall pick was a safety and normal dev. Jermaine McCain. Ooh. Another fun name, but good development. Perry Randolph, normal. Alex Adkins, normal. Steven Skinner, normal. It's all going to be normal. So Minshew's up to a 75 overall now. He is 25. Is it worth benching him for a rookie? Got to take a chance, baby. Abraham is a new starter. Morgan is a new starter over James Robinson. But see, Robinson's going to get touches. He's going to be my goal line back. They're pretty much going to split carries, so don't worry. Don't worry about it. We're just playing the higher dev trade guy. So, that's how that is. We didn't draft a left tackle. There weren't any good ones, so I wasn't going to reach. Wasn't going to reach. We're just going to stick with what we have. Could play Ben Barcher over there, but I'm not going to. And then, as I mentioned, and even though Leon Jacobs has star dev now, Courtney Elam will be my left outside linebacker. He'll probably be a 75, maybe even a 76 overall. These all-black Jags uniforms are so clean. Probably part of the reason I even chose the Jags as my franchise team. He is a 75 overall. We need to upgrade our safeties, but again, there weren't really any good ones that I liked in the class. So I wasn't just going to reach for it. I'm going to move Guy up quite a bit. That star dev trait is better than anything else I have on the D-line. And at cornerback, I just didn't feel like we needed to take one. Yeah, like normal dev looks disgusting. But those players are pretty good. Yeah, power halfback is going to be James Robinson. I do have to make some changes in the depth chart. Is Kalevon Chason just done on this team? He didn't get up to star dev. I don't know. Rush left end is obviously going to be Josh Allen. Rush right end is going to be the rookie Spencer Odom. He's already pretty good in that role. But then Rush D tackles harder. Because right now the CPU wants Raheem Burnett to be my main guy. I think my other guy is going to be Guy. Devin Guy. I think he makes sense at that spot. 82 power moves. 6'5", 3 hundo. I need to see salaries right now. Who is in the final year of their deal? DJ Chark. He'll sign an extension. Uh, Tyler Eifert should get traded. AJ Khan is... Eh. We're just going to simulate to the midseason mark. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Playbook change. I'm not sticking in Jaguars, man. This was brutal. You know what I'm going to do this time around? I'm going to try out Giants playbooks. Definitely can't run their defense. I'll do Cincinnati defense. Or actually, let's do Indianapolis. They're all just decent. Well, we'll see what happens this time. But yeah, I'm going to try out Giants. Just because we see the Giants do pretty well in Sim a lot of the time. So I'm going to just test it out. Got to test it out. I can't always go Tennessee. Two and five at the midseason mark. I already do not like Giants playbook. <laughs> 29th offense. I'm changing it. I'm not... It's Now is not the time to test. I just need to know that... Titans works, and that's all I care about. Titans playbook. Just get me back there. It's familiar. It works. I don't want to be 2-5. and five. It's not good. 
DJ Chark is someone that needs to be re-signed long-term. I think that goes without saying. 85 overall now, 24 years old, star development, five-year deal for Chark. We're going to have to up up the money a little bit. And DJ Chark is back. All the other players, I don't care about. I don't. It's going to be interesting to see what the dev trait is on the quarterback. It'll probably be star, but if, if it's better than star, I've made the best move I could have made starting him over Gardner Minshew. But if it's just regular star, I don't know. We didn't make the playoffs. Finished 7-9, much better than last year. Offense was still not great. But Jason Abraham was pretty good. 3,700 yards, 25 touchdowns, only 8 picks as a rookie. No rookie records in there, but just was solid overall. Rushing, Javier Morgan was not great. Averaging less than 4 yards per carry, but James Robinson wasn't much better. 4 yards per carry on the nose. They combined for 11 touchdowns. Receiving, LaVisca Chenault was the only 1,000-yard receiver, but he went over 1,000 by only 36 yards, had 11 touchdowns. Eifert was decent. DJ Chark could have been a lot better, but that is what it is. Miles Jack led the team in tackles. And then tackles for loss seems like, yeah, it seems like it's boosted to me. Raheem Burnett, 14, 12 for Spencer Odom. Sacks, 10 and a half for Josh Allen. No one else really got after the quarterback. And then Miles Jack led the team with three picks. Courtney Elam with three. Linebackers getting after it. CJ Henderson, Sidney Jones, Trey Herndon are three starting corners in a nickel package with three. Miles Jack had the only forced fumble of the entire season. Yearly awards, Nick Foles wins MVP with the Bears. Maybe I'll try Bears playbook, but it never works when I use it. I don't I don't get it. Neither does Patriots. Neither does Bengals, really. If you saw the Joe Burrow career simulation, he didn't do anything crazy. And then AFC Offense Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. What team am I doing? The Jags, yeah. Uh, no Jags in there. Defense Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Miles Jack at 2. Courtney Elam at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jason Abraham. Javier Morgan at 2. Defense Rookie of the Year is Courtney Elam. Raheem Burnett at 3. Spencer Odom at 5. Devin Guy at 7. So decent overall draft class. Let me see these dev traits. Running back and quarterback. Show me better than star. Yes. So they changed something. Morgan only has star, which kind of sucks. But look at that. Superstar dev on the QB, Jason Abraham. He could even go up to Superstar X Factor too, which is crazy because he did win Offensive Rookie of the Year. That'll change at the Super Bowl week. We 100% made the right decision. They're both a 76 overall now. And Abraham is four years younger with a better development trade. 100% the right move. Defensively, Guy only has star. I think that was expected, though. We just need to have a big draft in 2022, which we certainly could. But we will simulate to the offseason and prepare to be better. Jared Wilson is an impending free agent. He actually got up to star dev, but he's still only a 74 overall. He regressed. I can't re-sign him. Can't. Tyler Eifert can't sign. AJ Khan can't sign. Leon Jacobs, no need for him. I think my rookie outside linebacker probably did go up to star. Just kind of how that goes. Did the quarterback, though. No. He only got XP for it. But LaVisca Chenault went up to superstar development. Let's go LaVisca. I'm actually probably going to do, like, field general maybe for Jason Abraham. Just to get his accuracy up. I think that's important. But we definitely made the right move with getting him. 90 throw power. But LaVisca Chenault, what did he win? Like, receiver of the year? Maybe made the Pro Bowl or something? Just randomly went up? Okay. He's not going to have return, man. Let's give him route technician. Again, I don't really know if any of that matters in simulation. Would be nice to have seen uh, Javier Morgan go up. But he's still, he's an 81 overall. You like that. D.D. Westbrook, it's going to be about time to trade him. He's 28. Did he regress? He did. It's time to trade him. Middle of next season, it's definitely going to happen. And then defensively, Star Dev. There it is. And look at Miles Jack going up to Superstar X Factor. But Courtney Elam. Courtney Elam up to a 77 overall already. We'll do Run Stopper. It fits his, uh, it fits his scheme fit of the position. So he was already a really great pickup. Anyone else go up? Don't think... Oh, well, Jared Wilson we talked about. Leon Jacobs. But Miles Jack. 
Superstar X Factor at a 92 overall. Selfless, do I want to give him that? We don't really have enough guys for that to be uh, big right now. Let's get uh, let's get Run Stuffer. Let's get Run Stuffer. See how that goes. Ooh, Jair is here. Fear Jair. Wyatt Teller, I'm going to sign. I've already decided that. Don't care how much it costs. I mean, I kind of do. It's not like I'm not going to give you 80 million a year. But actually, no one wants to. So I'm going to take this money down. Let me keep my money. No one also wants Orlando Brown Jr. Well, I do. Come to Jacksonville, Orlando. Now, I know Jair would be a really, really good pickup. But he's expensive. And I just don't think we need him. How do you how do you think Colin Kaepernick would get a helmet on? And that's not even a joke. That's like genuine. I know it's hair. It's not like it's made of like some crazy material that's not malleable at all. I don't know. Whatever. Um, don't really need a quarterback. Don't need a running back. I don't think we need wide receiver right now. Tight end. Goddard, Najoku. I would give Dallas Goddard like a, a three-year deal. Deshaun Elliott is here, Texas Longhorn legend. 80 overall star dev. Let's go. Not face scan. That sucks. I, he's not even that expensive. I just... Can we really afford him? I'd play him at strong safety. That's kind of what he did at Texas. He started out really as a free safety and then moved over. He was a hybrid guy. And he was so, so good. I don't want to give him a ton of money though. But I can give him a little bit more. All right, let's see if we got any of these guys. Lowballed a bunch of them, but we got Wyatt Teller. We got Deshaun Elliott, and we got Dallas Goddard. Already three massive pickups because our offensive line improves a lot, even if you include tight end as an extension of the offensive line. But Wyatt Teller is a significant pickup because you look at Norwell, Linder, Teller across the inside. That's great. I still want Orlando Brown Jr. I think our offensive line would be perfect if we had that. And then defensively, Big pickup at free safety in Deshaun Elliott. Still could move him over. Still might even consider drafting a safety. Probably would. And I still think defensive line would be a big need. Like, if we can get the best D tackle in the class, best edge in the class, even with Chase on, even with Odom, even with Burnett, it would be worth considering, depending on how good the player is. Because that star or better development is so big. I mean, I don't feel like giving Orlando Brown Jr. more money. I think he'll just end up signing with us. No one else is going after him, and he, he did. Welcome to Jacksonville, Orlando Brown Jr. That's awesome. Now our offensive line looks great. Our team offense is an 87 overall. I think Jawan Taylor's fine at right tackle. What do I really look for in the draft here? Receiver, maybe, because D.D. Westbrook's on his way out. So receiver. And then on defense, we're looking at safety, D tackle, corner, maybe D end. We I know we drafted two D ends last year. I'm not convinced, but if a great one's available, I'm not going to say no. We pick at number two, and also what is that number seven? Is that eight? I think it's seven. Yeah, second seven, ten, thirty one. And look at Antoine Whittington. Looks to be a really good player. A power moves. I'll consider it. And thank goodness I took a quarterback last year because these ones are bad. And the tackles are really bad too. The entire offensive line class is vicious. All right, Lions at number one. Go with a 69 overall right tackle. Swing and a miss from Detroit. And now I have to make a tough decision at number two. Because Antoine Whittington looks very good. But we don't really need him. Oscar Williams looks really, really good from a D tackle. Oh, it's probably Oscar from Miami. Do we need him? I also want Marco Smith. I don't know. What do I do here? I mean, Oscar Williams looks... He looks too good. I'm going to take him. He looks too good to pass up. He's a 74 and ranked at number 6 in the class. Where last time we had a number 9 in the class, it was a 76. This draft class is not quite as good. Only normal development as well. That is a huge miss, especially when the safety comes out and he's super good. There goes Whittington. There goes Marco Smith. He's only 74, actually. This draft class is just bad. So, that sucks. It's interesting. We're just in a position where I don't really like any of my options. 
I think I'm going to take Dennis Stoudemire. I mean, he's a speed rusher. I'd probably play him at defensive end. I don't really want him. And all the other guys who are good in the class are run-stopping defensive ends or D-tackles. I don't want anyone. I really don't. I just hate this draft class. I hate, It's so bad. It really is. I'm uh, I'm upset. I really I, I am. I don't like any of the players, and I don't think they're good. I, this is just a trade down, draft, rebuild video. That's just what it is. All right, trading number seven and George McKenzie, defensive tackle, we drafted for a first rounder from the Cardinals next year and a second rounder from the Cardinals next year as well. I'm not just gonna take bad players for the sake of just you know drafting somebody. I'll take one at number ten probably, and they're not gonna be that bad. Like, we still could draft a sick player with this pick. We could get the number one overall guy. But it's not like Dennis Stoudemire, who's an early first-round guy. It's not like he looks to be anything crazy. And Bryce Presley. Like he's a run-stopping defensive end. Another guy I'd play at D-tackle. Don't really know anything about his pass rushing. I'm going to take a chance on him. I think he could be the best player in the class, so I'm going to take him. 74 overall, number 9. He does have star better development, at least. He's going to play D-tackle. Only has 72 power moves. Yeah, more of a D-tackle anyway. At 6'5", 295. Rashard Daniels just looks way too good to pass up here. I didn't really even look at him during the scouting process, but amazing 40. Great top skills. Mid-first round guy. Again, can play him on the outside. 73 overall. Star or better development. Number 17 in the class. Took him at 31. It's a deep draft class. There just aren't really many good players in there. 91 speed, 70 zone coverage. Wow. Huh. Goodbye, Joe Schobert. Trading Kate LeVon Chase on in two second round picks for a first round pick from the Falcons next year. I'm just at a point where I'm upset with this draft class. I mean, we got some good players. Don't get me wrong. Nothing exceptional. We'll draft to safety here. Taylor Parker. Out of LSU. 73 overall. Only normal development. Is decent. Not much of a cover guy as a defensive back. But he can tackle, baby. Yeah, 78 tackle. He can tackle. Javante Cox here. Yeah, Javante. Okay. Okay, Jeff. 71 overall. Normal dev. Number 36 in the draft. Took him at 74. I think I'll let the CPU handle the rest. Maybe they'll get a star dev player. That'd be lucky. Oh, they did draft a star or better player. Kirk Leary. Enrique Peel? No. I mean, none of them are good. Who was the highest overall player in the class? Only 77. George Finch, running back. He did look pretty good. Outside of that, there's really not a ton here. Dennis Stoudemire is an interesting guy. I, I mean, he didn't look all that good. And he wasn't. Like, he's okay. Nothing crazy. What about Marco Smith? He is star better. Man, those Chargers uniforms look awesome. Again, not much of a cover guy. But I was close to taking him or the defensive tackle. I went for the defensive tackle instead. I don't know why. He just looked to be way too good. Only star, whatever. Listen, I have some trade ideas lined up. So we'll see what happens with that. Except Joe Schobert, I'm telling you, is gone. He will not last. Presley. I said I was going to play you a D-tackle, right? Yeah, 6'5", 295, you're going to slide on over. Oh, yeah, Spencer Odom was supposed to play D-tackle. He's 316. I'm like, you can play the end in a 4-3, right? He's like, what do I look like, Calais Campbell? And I go, a little, but no. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's happening on the D-line. It's weird. It is, it's a weird group. Where even is he? He's an 80 overall D-tackle. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I should have moved you over already. Presley is going to play D-tackle. Burnett on the edge. Well, he's got to play right end. And then Josh Allen at left end. We got something, though. We're working. We're working. 85 overall. This is the team for season three. It's looking pretty good, to be honest. I am going to make some changes in a few spots. But overall, I am happy with it. I am happy. And I'm trading Joe Schobert. I am. I'm probably trading D.D. Westbrook as well. I just have to figure out exactly where I want to play these guys. 
and I will figure it out. I will. Daniel sub linebacker. I think Burnett probably should be, you know, right where he is. D tackle's got to change though for sure. I'm gonna put probably DJ Chark in the slot. So while I'm simulating to the midseason, I am gonna stop it pretty quickly. I just want to have like a bad pick for one of my top picks as we're running to. So hopefully one of my picks will have more value. So if I make a crazy trade, I'll be able to do so because the pick seems higher than it is. Perfect. Number three, that's perfect. Well, I was a sliver away from getting Terry McLaurin in the preseason, and now they have no interest in the players I want to trade. So that trade has completely fallen through. Oh my God, it went through. Okay, well, we're giving up a lot, but we're getting a ton in return. Joe Schobert, Projected number three, projected number six for Chase Young. That's a big midseason acquisition. <laughs> now, he's going to require a very big contract. But, I mean, that's a great addition. A huge upgrade over Raheem Burnett with 90 overall. Superstar X-Factor, 23 years old. Chase Young. Huge get for the team. Yeah, we're going to keep things the way they are over there. Chase Young can definitely stay at right end. And then um, our new middle linebacker is Courtney Elam. We're moving him back over. He's a 77 overall there. Scheme fit. That works out fine. And then we got Rashard Daniels, who's a rookie. He's playing right outside linebacker, but he's kept at left outside linebacker on his actual position, so he gets the scheme fit for more XP. So he's great over right outside linebacker. Linebacking core looks awesome. We're really just missing a safety. And once I trade D.D. Westbrook, I think I might end up getting like a first round pick for him or something like that. O-line, great. Receiving core is getting there. We just need one more weapon, I think. And then it's about developing some of these guys. Maybe in a stud corner would be nice. And now finalizing a two-part trade with the Washington football team. I sure hope I didn't call him by another name the last time. I feel like I may have. <laughs> D.D. Westbrook, Raheem Burnett, and a fifth-round pick for a first-round pick back. So it's a two-parter the same way that, like, Odell and Olivier Vernon and some picks went to the Browns in exchange for some picks and Jabril Peppers and Kevin Zeitler, if you recall that trade, which, unfortunately, I do. Gardner Minshew's still hanging out. Don't know what I'm doing with him just yet. But he's still under contract, so I'm not really in a hurry to trade him. And he has what? Oh, well, actually, actually, this is his final year. Good thing I noticed that. I thought we had one more year left with him. So I got to trade Minshew. And I got to do that ASAP, like now. Oh my God, that is so dumb. I get that he's 33 at this point. But it's still Julio Jones. He's a 93 overall. Superstar X Factor. We are trading Gardner Minshew straight up for a Julio Jones. What is his trade value? Julio, I mean. Can't be anything. Well, now we have a great, you know, trio. LaVisca, slot. But I think I'm probably going to play DJ Chark there. That's a really good group of receivers to have. Javier Morgan back to starting running back. James Robinson will be used on the goal line. Linebacker's fine. D-tackles are in a great spot. We're kind of like a safety away. Well, we don't have a punter either, but I don't think that's the difference right now. Probably not the difference, but I have to change the depth chart yet again. Slot corner, I do not want to be Sidney Jones. I want him playing on the boundary. Sub linebacker, we are fine with Rashard Daniels there. Rush D-tackle has to change. I need to bring Presley back in that role. That's Devon Hamilton, so no. Bryce Presley. We have a rush left end. We have a rush right end. Slot receiver. I think I said I was going to play DJ Chark there. And I am. Actually, I'm switching it to Julio. Power halfback, James Robinson. That's good. Just want to make sure that our right outside linebacker is Rashard Daniels. All right, we're good to go. See you at the midseason mark. Well, Josh Allen's an impending free agent. That's no good. Three and five at the midseason mark. Jason Abraham seems like he's on a great pace. So you like that. Josh Allen is an impending free agent. Need to bring him back. Brandon Linder, Josh Lambeau. James Robinson's here. Andrew Norwell's 30. Got to start with Josh Allen, though. That's for sure. And we definitely have the money to do it. So 
up the salary so he actually resigns and welcome back josh allen brandon linder is back as well josh lambo i don't want to pay a kicker that much money when i know we can get him in free agency for way cheaper he just wants more salary james robinson i'll tell you i really just don't care to extend him at the moment just because we do have another option that is younger with better development about the same overall is it worth it andrew norwell is gonna be a two-year deal james i know like james robinson people are gonna want me to bring him back just because he's been a great story in real life so far but i just don't think that it makes a ton of sense to do so as juan taylor resigns i don't think it makes a ton of sense to do so in game just because we could pay other positions instead of paying him as he's a running back and it's just not worth it to me with another back in there it just isn't worth it a year younger, better development trade, only minus two overall. I just don't think it makes sense. Where are we in terms of development trade on defense? Okay, so Rashard Daniels only has star, but something I did notice is Presley. Bryce Presley, the rookie, has superstar X Factor. You know, certainly made the right move with drafting him. Unstoppable force. Sure. Secure tackle. That's boring. Let's give him inside stuff. We made the playoffs at eight and eight third in the division and made the playoffs jason abraham had a really good season 4300 yards 36 touchdowns only 10 interceptions rushing james robinson actually got the bulk of the yards even though morgan got more carries james robinson just outperformed javier morgan something that's something to consider when it comes to resigning time i ended up putting julio in the slot and it paid off over 100 catches almost 1500 yards 15 touchdowns dj chark was very good as well Dallas Goddard had a great season. LaVisca Chenault was okay. Nice number of catches in there. Defensively, Miles Jack had a very solid season. Led team in tackles. Tackles for loss, 18 for Spencer Odom. But oh my goodness, look at Josh Allen with 22 sacks. Odom, 7.5. Chase Young, only 7.5. 4 for Bryce Presley. Interceptions, 3 for Jack Henderson. And Deshaun Elliott led the team. Defensive touchdown in there as well from Miles Jack. Yearly awards. Lamar Jackson wins MVP, but Jason Abraham in there at number five. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson. Abraham at three, although I expect we'll see some votes for Defensive Player of the Year for Josh Allen. Doesn't win it. Finishes number three. It went to Tremaine Edmonds. Jack in there at eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Bradley Dugan. No Jaguars. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Rashard Daniels, our linebacker. Taylor Parker, the safety at three. Bryce Presley at five. And Javante Cox, I'm sure, at number 10. Yeah, I didn't really mention the starting safety. But we did have one out there. Uh, well, obviously, we had a starting safety. But we had a rookie starting safety is what I mean. And we'll see if this team can beat the Colts in the wild card. I kind of doubt it. But we move on. 24-21. Okay. I don't think we're going to beat the Patriots in the divisional either. But hopefully, I'm wrong. And I am. 34-31. Another three-point victory. This team's getting hot at the right time. Could an eight-win team make the Super Bowl? Now, the Browns are super tough in simulation. Do I hop in to do Super Sim? It's only 2022. We'll just hope that we can actually make the Super Bowl. I highly doubt it, especially against the Browns and Sim. They're way too good. So I really don't think we're going to make them. We don't. Browns win the Super Bowl 30-10. to 10. I didn't mean to simulate to the offseason. I tried to do Super Bowl. Clearly, that did not work. But we didn't make the Super Bowl anyway, so that's okay. I would have been really pissed. But we have Julio now. He's not even an impending free agent. Like, we have Julio for another year. That's cool. And he's still pretty good. He's going to regress. But he's only a, he's a 91, right? So that's really not too bad. DJ Chark getting up near a 90. I think I should let James Robinson go. I don't know. Chenault's improving quite a bit. Defensively, show me some big upgrades. Yes, Rashard Daniels. He's up a lot. Superstar Dev, he's going to be into the 80s. We'll do pass coverage on him. Even though his, his pass coverage is like not that good. I don't know how he's pass coverage type unless he got upgraded a lot. They got, they got it up to 77 zone. Okay, that is pretty good. I guess I'll just keep doing pass coverage just to fit the scheme. We'll get other things as well. But you might want to change that down the line. Odom went up to star development. 
Love to see that. So we have a we have a really solid team at this point. Some really good players. Our front seven is amazing. Secondary needs some improvement. I'm looking at safety. I'm looking at corner. I wish Sidney Jones would have a higher development trait than normal. Just looks ugly. Josh Lambeau went down to star. And he regressed. He's 32. He's going to regress as a kicker already. Lose his star development. I'm going to let him walk and then bring him back probably. James Robinson. I just don't want to pay him that money. I would rather get a different running back for a little bit more if they're way better than bring him back for like four or five million a year. I just don't think it's worth it. And we'll see what's available in free agency. I have 25, almost 26 million. Jair Alexander is back in free agency. Kareem Hunt is here. See, he would be better value, in my opinion, because we could get him for really, really cheap. He would be a cheaper contract than James Robinson, and he's at 92 overall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer him. I think it's worth offering Nicole Hardman a contract because if we lowball him and get him, Julio's going to retire next year anyway. So it's worth a low ball just in case we can get him. I don't really think we need to do anything on the offensive line. I think the defensive line's good. No one's really going to be an upgrade here. The only thing I'm really looking for is in the secondary. And Jair Alexander's still here. We just, we get him almost too frequently for me. And I, that is making me not want to do it. And we have a first round pick. I think even two. So I think I will pass on him yet again. But Josh Lambeau, I will not pass on. We will offer him 53 total points. Probably just do a little bit more than that. And I think we're going to be having a very good free agent class. I think we're going to be in a really good spot. Now we got Mikol Hardman. Mikol Hardman is a burner. Kind of surprised we got him. But now we have a group of four sick receivers. And we're playing for the future. Because Julio is not going to be here forever. He will retire at the end of this year. So Hardman will be the replacement. So now we, we have him for a year. We don't really need him. But we got him for cheap. Low balled him. Love that. Josh Lambeau, better sign. Like, don't be weird. Just come back to the Jags. I know we're giving you yet less than what you want, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> I don't agree with that concept. We did get Josh Lambeau, but we also got Kareem Hunt. Get a running back into the 90s. Scheme fit, star dev, I'm in. And then Josh Lambeau. Forget about it. It's draft time. I'm looking at corner. I'm looking at safety. Show me someone amazing. Picking at number 11. Some really good looking QBs. At least at the very top of the board. Billy Preston looks great. Noah Meeks, maybe not so much. Shaden Ellis out of Texas. Looks crazy good. We just don't really need linebackers. I wish there were some six safeties, and they're just, they're just not. There's not any six safeties. There goes Shadon Ellis, 75 overall. It, honestly, good that he went because I maybe would have drafted him. Instead, it's going to be Demarius Goddard, and it's going to be a reach. He's a late first-round guy, but I actually think he looks pretty good. Really high zone coverage. I think he could work well for us at safety. I'm going to see what he's all about. Number 21 in the class. We took him at number 11. Only normal dev. That's the thing that really kills is only normal development. His play rec and awareness are what brings his overall down quite a bit. Because speed and zone coverage look to be in really good spots, but it's the other things that really let us down, unfortunately. We had pick, pick, oh, we, <laughs> I'm so surprised. I couldn't even speak. We pick again at number 12. I didn't even know that. Totally missed it. I need a better safety. I need one. I'm trading this pick for a better safety. Okay, huge trade. And let me tell you, this is probably best case scenario because I tried to trade for Tyre Matthew. I tried to trade for Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Every single time uh, would cause him to exceed the league's maximum salary cap. When they have the cap space, it's so frustrating. I don't know how some of these contracts are structured, but it is, it's annoying. We're trading number 12 overall. Doug Guy. I forget his first name, but our D-tackle name guy. Star Dev. And a second round pick this year, so a lot of picks. But for Jamal Adams, that solves our safety need in a big way. Deshaun Elliott, free safety. Jamal Adams, strong safety, superstar X-Factor, welcome to the team. And what an addition it's going to be. There's a quarterback in here. Late first round guy, it's the end of the second. I did like Stefan Charleston. 
I mean, run stopper with B-plus power moves. Receiver. Early first round receiver. I mean, I'm sold. I know we don't need him, but guess what? We're taking him. Number five in the draft. Took him at 62. Star, better development. Amazing speed. Good catching. Good spectacular catch. Just needs to work on his deep route running. And now we have the deepest receiver room possible. It doesn't get better than Julio, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, Miko Hardman, and now that rookie. Wow. Quarterback's going to be gone for sure. Yep. Totally fine with that. We got a way better player. What luck. What great fortune. <laughs> Never going to have enough defensive tackles, especially when you trade one. Justin Powell, 70 overall, normal dev. 89 strength, 78 power moves, nice block shed, good speed. But that will do it for the draft. You know what? We're having fun. I'm putting Ladarius Coakley, the rookie, at a cal in the slot just to do it. Is he the best option there? No, not even, not even close. But I'm doing it anyway because we're having some fun. Other than that, though, this is the team. I mean, I just want to play the rookie just because I, I just want to. And he's a slot type, so it makes sense too. Team's looking very, very good right now. It's really tough to find a hole. But hopefully our running backs can. Ha ha ha. I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark. I will see you guys there. Five and two at the midseason mark, leading the division. That's what we like to see. I'm going to upgrade our players manually just to see if anyone went up in development trait. But it doesn't appear that anyone did. Miles Jack is an impending free agent. Going to want to bring him back. Miles Jack, come back. Chase Young. I don't can't think of a fun rhyme for that. Uh, wow, we have a lot of big free agents. CJ Henderson all the way to the left. I think Julio's got to go because he's 34. But other than that, I think I want those other four guys back. He's just too expensive. And we have other guys that are going to fill in. Miles Jack is crazy expensive because he's left outside linebacker. Uh, can, I can I change his position to middle linebacker and, play and pay him like a middle linebacker, please? Chase Young is back. That's a big one. As we have a couple guys who are trending toward a 99 overall. And I don't know if changing Miles Jack to a middle linebacker is going to impact what he's asking for. I think it might. But I'm not positive about it. It's just really annoying because no off-the-ball linebacker is going to make that type of money. So that gets really annoying. Yeah, look, at the contract is way, way, way cheaper. So now we can bring back my... You don't like anything about the offer. Is he still looking for the outside linebacker money? He probably is. Uh, LaVisca Chenault, let's extend him. He is back. And then CJ Henderson, let's extend him. I think I am actually going to have to give Miles Jack a massive, massive, massive contract extension as CJ Henderson returns. The rest don't really matter, which is cool. But Miles Jack could be a problem. We're not going to have money for Julio anyway. And I, I said I don't even want that. Oh, we're so few snaps away from seeing Coakley's overall. Or, I mean, development trait. He's a 78 overall, which is pretty good. I'm sure you guys knew that. It's pretty good. Six and two. Miles Jack is going to have to sign a huge extension. Like, it's going to be super bad. But I'm going to have to give him a lot more money. Has to be probably a lot more, uh, like, 17 mil like he was asking for initially. See if he wants that. Doesn't like it. Well, I'm going to probably end up franchise tagging you then. Because you're not negotiating with me. And I think it was because of the position change. Let's see the rookie. Show me something good. Otherwise, I'm taking him out. It's only star. All right, he's out. He's done. He's dead to me. Julio, slot receiver. Shark underneath. I got hyped up for star dev. Damn. First round bye. Went 13 and 3. Fifth best offense. Abraham only threw for 29 touchdowns. And we have the fifth best defense as well. Abraham, 4,400 yards, 29 touchdowns, only 7 picks. Rushing, Kareem Hunt had 10 TDs. I feel like we really didn't score that many touchdowns. Julio had over 1,000 yards. Goddard had over 1,000 yards. Chark and Coakley had interesting seasons, but yeah, not that many touchdowns. LaVisca Chenault had zero. Defensively, Miles Jack, unreal year. 103 tackles, 13 for loss, 7 picks and a sack. Nope, 7 sacks and a pick. Why did I say it like that? Oh, man, Josh Allen, 20 tackles for loss. Chase Young, 18. 
Spencer Odom, 16. All of them had 10 plus sacks. Double digits, 13 and a half for Allen. 12 and a half for Chase Young, 10 for Spencer Odom, 7 for Jack, 5 and a half for Presley. Defense is going crazy. Rashard Daniels, 3 picks. Henderson, 2. Trey Herndon, 2. Jamal Adams, 2. Yearly awards. Cam Newton wins it. Jason Abraham at 8. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Cam Newton. Jason Abraham at 7. Defensive Player of the Year is Logan Wilson. Miles Jack at 4. Josh Allen at 6. Rashard Daniels at 7. Chase Young at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Ladarius Coakley. No QBs in there? Tyree win at three. That's so crazy. We just won that. And he didn't even play that much. Defense rookie of the year is Roman Mayer. Demarius Goddard gets in there at number 10. Of course, that was the safety we drafted at number 11. That just wasn't too good. But first round bye. I think we'll we'll play the Jets if they get through. But will they get through? I think it's unlikely. It's the 11 and 5 Chiefs that we have to play. Okay, they're not going to be messing around. I mean, it sucks to be get, uh, to be letting Julio Jones go. I think he's just going to retire. We'll see if we can beat the Chiefs in the divisional. I'm just thinking about re-signing him. And we do. 28-16. This time, I will jump into the conference championship. It's against the Bengals, who went 13-3 as well. They did not get the benefit of a first-round bye. They're an 88 overall as well. Not messing around. Burrow, Mixon, Tyler Boyd are their top three players. We had Jamal Adams, Miles Jack, Chase Young. This team is so good. This might be one of the best teams I've ever built in Madden 21. At least on defense. This defense is crazy. I'm drinking Arnold Palmer out of the jug. I had like a sip left. Don't worry about it. All right. Conference championship. Let's go. Up 3-0, then 10-0 early. 17-0. The Bengals can't get on the board. The Jags defense is too good. This is the best defense of all time. We're going to shut out the Bengals. Oh, we actually might. 17-0 is the final. The Bengals don't even score a point. Saxonville is back. We, we're setting up a no-fly zone. Burrow, 240 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. Receiving Julio went off. And then defensively. Who had the pick? Miles Jack. Of course he did. Courtney Elam with a sack. Yeah, this team just too good. Too strong. And this team is going to the Super Bowl. And it's against the Dallas Cowboys. I need to see some big development trade upgrades. Just because that, you know, that's always cool to see. 92 overall team. Show me some big boosts. I'm not seeing any on offense. I'm disappointed. Even Coakley didn't go up. And then on defense... Oh, okay. So, Rashard Daniels. I'm like, I see more red than usual. I was trying to figure it out. Rashard Daniels went up to Superstar X Factor. I don't think Adrenaline Rush is good. Let's give him a... I don't know. Like... Wait, what? A medium route knockout? Let's give him... Let's give him a short route knockout. I don't know. Again, I'm not even sure if these matter in simulation. But it, Rashard Daniels went up to Superstar X Factor. Odom, I think, went up to Superstar. I think he was star before. And I don't think these mattered. Let's give him under pressure and run stopper. I mean, he's a D tackle. Might as well. Nobody else went up, but things are looking very good right now. Our D line's amazing. This is really the best front seven we could have. Miles Jack is playing up to a 98. He's 27. He's going to be so expensive. I'm going to have to franchise tag him and re-sign him at a later date. Super Bowl Minneapolis. 92 overall Jaguars against the 86 overall Dallas Cowboys. We're hopping in. Let's see what this defense can do against the Cowboys. And they're shutting it down. We're up 10-0. The Cowboys can't find the end zone. This defense is too good. They finally get on the board. They score again quickly. It's 20 to 14, 20 to 17. The Cowboys are finding their rhythm offensively, but we got to get them out of it, and we have. 34, 24, 37, 31. All right, we're hopping in. We're seeing some of these players on defense. The Cowboys are threatening again. Our offense isn't doing their job. I feel like I'm in Jags franchise usering here as it's going outside. Nice pass breakup. Prescott has four touchdowns. That came out of nowhere. I think I might just let Miles Jack do his thing and user Rashard Daniels. 
Quick throw. Miles Jack not having it. Or we got, what is it? Courtney Elam? I believe that's his first name. Going over the middle. That's a great pass. Oh my goodness. Amari Cooper breaks two tackles. Beats CJ Henderson for the touchdown. And all of a sudden, our big lead is no more. We're going to be down in this football game, penning the extra point. 38 37 Cowboys. It's going to be just over a two minute drill. We got Abraham lead the Jags to a Super Bowl win. Hardman back to return, back to his Georgia days. I think he does a little bit of that for the Chiefs as well. Not even back to the 25. And this could be a touchdown. Julio. I mean, that's defensive pass interference. What is that? All right, Abraham. Quick slant. Julio's wide open. He trucks over the safety. Get out of the way. Julio Jones. Touchdown. Oh, no. He's wearing Dennis Peoples number 11. That's disgusting. Of course... Jags franchise legend Dennis Peoples and he's just taken over but whether it's Jags franchise or Jags rebuild I'm finding number 11 I, I did I not throw it like five seconds before we got touched I tried to throw a bullet pass does it take that long come on now it's a two-minute drill for the Cowboys someone better come up make a play well no one's on that at all Dak in a run I'm all over it Ball comes loose. Recovery of Richard. Force fumble Richard Daniels, and he recovers. That could be the Super Bowl. Kareem Hunt, patient. Can't get the first down, but he's close. First down pretty much ends it. Third and inches. Why pay Kareem Hunt if we can't give it to him here? Kick through the door. Kareem Hunt, first down. That could do it, and it will do it. Victory formation. Cowboys out of timeouts. And the Jacksonville Jaguars will be Super Bowl champions. And now for the first time in Jacksonville Jaguars franchise history, unless you count Jags franchise, the series I do on my channel, a Super Bowl, a Lombardi trophy is coming home to Jacksonville. The Jags have won it all. Cool, I'm, I'm down for that. All right, we'll go into the final season, try to repeat as Super Bowl champions, and then Miles Jack will be getting franchise tagged. I don't know how much money he wants, but I will give him as much as 20. All right, he is back. I think the franchise tag for outside linebackers is about that. Might be a little bit more. And then do I really want Devon Hamilton? No, I don't. No one in here really worth bringing back. So I think Julio retired. That's why he wasn't in there. Good for him. He, got, he went out on top, won a Super Bowl and retired. So good for Julio. But it's not like we're getting much worse at the position. DJ Chark is into the 90s. LaVisca Schnault is into the 90s. We had Coakley and Nicole Hardman behind them. We still have a unit. Offensive line's great. And then defensively, we got a bunch of studs. We just really could use an amazing corner. Or perhaps... I don't even want to say a safety. I mean, we're fine with Deshaun Elliott. Ooh, CJ Henderson got a speed boom. Speed boom. Speed bump. All right, last NFL draft here will be in 2024. We don't really need anything, so it's just best player available. I mean, look at all these quarterbacks. Five first-round caliber QBs. They all look pretty good. Man, good time to need a QB, I guess. It's like the 2021 class from what it looks like right now. The 2021 class might end up like not being that great. I think Trevor Lawrence will be a stud. Like, he's amazing. But, I mean, outside of that, I don't think Justin Fields is a shoe in to be great, even though I think he's a really good player. Trey Lance, certainly not going to be a guaranteed great player. I mean, nothing's guaranteed, right? But Kyle Trask in there as well. Zach Wilson. Mac Jones has even played well. And then you take some quarterbacks outside the first round that could be good, and you could develop them. Like, who knows? If... Um, I mean, Kellen Mond maybe could be someone that a team develops over time. I'm not sure. Just just an example of someone who's in the class. People are going to want me to name De'Ara King, but I just think his size is going to be the downfall of him, and I don't think he's as dynamic of a passer as Kyler Murray was coming out or even Russell Wilson. Pretty good centers in here. Might take one of those. Josh Belton's going to be my pick. Another cornerback in here. He's a 75 overall, normal dev. Number eight in the class. Sigma 32. The normal development really hurts him, but not a bad player. Round two, do I take this quarterback? Just to take him? I mean, 
Yeah, I don't see a reason not to. Sam Blankenship, 72 overall, only normal development. Probably not the QB of the future, but actually does look really good. Good throw power, decent accuracy. Certainly something to develop there, but not for me. And the last player I'm taking is Reggie Beckham. A minus power moves at defensive tackle. Welcome to Saxonville. He might contribute with 83 power moves as a rookie, but probably not. That's going to do it for the draft. We'll see if we can repeat as Super Bowl champions. So I guess I'll just simulate to the playoffs. Why not? Final team is a 92 overall to start the final season, but they should get even better. Do I want to change any of these positions around? Is Elam regressing? How old is he? He's 25. Is he really only an 82? I don't know why I thought he was so much higher. I thought he was like an 86. I think morale played a factor in that, but I mean, it must have shot up a ton. As Spencer Odom goes up to an 87, he's playing like a beast. Plus two power moves is nice. Even though I probably should have done like finesse speed rusher maybe. I don't know. Really good front seven. Specialist. Presley instead of Williams. Allen, Young, Herndon can play in the slot. That's fine. Actually, Belton, because he's younger. Rookie. Mecole Hardman in the slot. I'm fine with that. Kareem Hunt, third down running back and power back. We got a great group. Time to go out and perform. Going to spend my coach XP and then simulate to the playoffs. Tight end training boost and running back training boost and kicker and punter. Why not? Everything. See you guys for the playoffs. Imagine if we didn't make them. How depressing that would be. But we did make the playoffs, but only at 9-7. and seven. We have to play in the wild card. Third best offense. Jason Abraham had a great year. Tenth best defense. Threw 17 picks, though. More than one a game. Why you gotta throw so many? 37 TDs is great. Almost 4,400 yards is great. He's up to a 94 overall with morale. Can't really hit the medium area of the field. I think that's his downfall right now. What is that? What is that? 96 deep, 97 short. Oh, and yeah, 81 medium. I never learned how to throw it medium distance. I can only throw really long or really short. Come on, dude. Madden sucks. I hate the development upgrade system. Kareem Hunt, 999 yards. Couldn't get him one more. Had to give it to Javier Morgan, who, let's be honest... I don't know if you'd call him a bust, but he hasn't really been good. He's an 86 overall, whatever. Receiving Hardman, almost 1,300 yards, 11 TDs. Chanel had 95 catches for almost 900 yards. Eight TDs. Dallas Goddard, similar to year, just 20 fewer catches, but average more per catch. And DJ Chark, 650 yards, six touchdowns. Defensively, Miles Jack, five and a half sacks and a pick, three tackles for loss. 14 from Allen led the team, 10 for Richard Daniels, who also had seven sacks. 11.5 for Josh Allen, led the team. 8.5 for Young. 5.5 miles. Jack talked about that. Spencer Odom with 4. Bryce Presley with 4. Not a lot of interceptions. 2 for CJ Henderson. 2 for Rashard, or excuse me, 1 for Rashard Daniels. Miles Jack and Josh Belton, the rookie out of Texas A&M. And no defensive touchdowns. Should have some MVP votes for Jason Abraham, though. But only at number 6. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Cam Newton. Jason Abraham at 7. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Dan Brenner. I miss any Jaguars in there? Yeah, Marcus Wilcox. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Josh Belton. Okay. Our corner. So we have a 95 offense, 92 defense for a 93 overall team. I mean, things look pretty good. LaVisca Chenault is a 94 overall. No morale factoring in. He's just really good, but can't really run short routes. And then defensively, I mean, we have superstar X-Factor all over the field. Time for it to matter, though. Beat the Chiefs in the wild card. Please, advance to the divisional. Repeat as Super Bowl champions they're not going to. They lose here in the wild card. As we will check out the team one final time. This was a really fun rebuild to do. We built a 93 overall team. Amazing offense. Hardman went up to superstar dev. I mean, we have such a good team. No one else really went up at all on offense as far as I can tell. And then on defense, it would be nice to have seen someone else go up, but don't think we saw any changes. So this is the final team. Who would be the MVP of this? I don't know. I mean, Josh Allen had a crazy 22-sack season. 
It's been fun to see some of these guys develop and draft a really good quarterback. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe if you're new or not subscribed and take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud.